For 16 unbroken years, the All Progressive Grand Alliance, ABGA, has remained the ruling party in Anambra State, Southeast Nigeria. And now, with the victory of its candidate, Professor Charles Solodo, in the just concluded governorship election in the state, the party is set to extend this record by another four years. Beyond Anambra, however, ABGA has had a mixed record in other states in the country. Although he secured victory in Imo State when its candidate, Rocha Sokorocha, won the governorship election in 2011, this did not last, as Sokorocha was later to defect with a faction of ABGA to the All Progressives Congress. Now joining us to tell us how his party ran another successful campaign in Anambra and how it intends to extend its tentacles to other states in Nigeria is Victor. Oh, yeah. National Chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Oye, and good morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Well, let's start by saying congratulations. Uh, it's the uh, morning after the uh, supplementary election, and you have been able to lead your party to victory in Anambra State. How sweet is this victory? How do you feel? First of all, I wish to thank God Almighty for the grace, for the love he has shown us. Uh, we are not the best, but he has chosen us to celebrate this victory and give service to the people of Anambra State. I think all that has happened in the past uh, six, seven months were all designed by God to create this beautiful day that we're all celebrating. The success story of Apoga in this election is being shared by every Nigerian. Uh, this is the election that has created the highest level of tension and anxiety in this country. Everybody was expectant. Everybody wanted to know the outcome of this election. And uh, one of the reasons, apart from Apoga as a party that is soaring, our candidate, Professor Chuku Masuludo, is a, is a candidate for all Nigerians. They, they loved him considering his achievements at the Central Bank. So they know that he's going to replicate that in Anambra State. So the tension was there, the anxiety was there, and we were focused. You know, we're not distracted by the shenanigans of politicians who try to distract us. Our, our detractors all over the place wanted to misdirect us and confuse us, but God in his infinite mercy kept steadied us throughout the struggle. I call it a struggle because we went through five phases to get, at, to get what we have, what we're enjoying today. We went through the courts, went through internal crisis in the party, instigated by overzealous and overambitious members of the party. We went through the courts, we went through INEC, went through all manner of challenges, but in the end, we are singing the sweet song. And I am sure that every Nigerian is happy with what happened in Anambra uh, yesterday. The, the emergence of Professor Chukuma Soludo is the best thing that has happened to Anambra State. He's going to consolidate on the wonderful achievements of Governor Willie Obiano. That is the joy I have. As the national chairman of the party, all I am expected to do is to drive the party to success. And we have succeeded in building a very strong, coherent political party that has won elections across Nigeria. Governor Willie Obiono has shown what strong leadership is all about. He has built an international airport in 15 months and the International Conference Center, the best in Nigeria, an international stadium, FIFA rated. The man is all over the place working, doing his best to give our people the best. So Professor Soludo coming in now has given us the confidence that the Obiano vision will be sustained and surpassed. That is the joy we have today. And I know the level of uh, congratulatory messages I've been receiving has been very, very impressive. People have been calling me, texting, everywhere. They are happy. Abuga people, APC, PDP, everybody is happy that Professor Soludo has eventually to lead a number of states to the paradise of our dream. Well, congratulations again. You're clearly euphoric. 
But now, in the lead up to the elections, we saw defections from APCA. The deputy governor defected to APC, as did seven state lawmakers. What will happen going forward? Because their story, when they were defecting, was criticisms of a lack of internal democracy and an allegation that a few individuals have hijacked the party. Will you be dismissing those allegations, or are you going to have a moment of introspection and try and work on those allegations and offer olive branches to those who have defected from your party? You know, first of all, you know, to a is human to divine. I'm not God, and I'm not. Uh, I don't carry too much air around me. For me, party had strengthened the party. People disagree to agree. Do you understand? You mentioned the deputy governor. Nobody did anything to him. He just chose to embark on adventure. You understand me? I'm sure, he's regretting his action today. Because no cost to leave the party at the time he did. He, had, it's not, he was not denied anything. He had everything he should have. His statutory, uh, his statutory. Uh, whatever he has, a, he had everything. So he suddenly, he just jumped out of the sh out of the ship. Uh, who are you going to blame? Somebody who jumps out of a 21-story building. What do you expect will happen? He will crash now, nah, and you will be blaming the building or the builder. All those people that left, they left without justification. I can tell you that. No moral justification, and they decided where they did. They went on sheer adventure. I can bet you that. And some of them have been calling come back if you show sufficient remorse. That's what we have to do. Abga is the party for all of us. The party is too big for a few persons to hijack. Abga is too big and these people they are talking about, they are our and the party has done them well. For a party to give you its ticket is the height of confidence. And they suddenly dumped the party midway. It is not proper now. Not proper. About what we have done to them or what they have done to us. I see that as mere politics. You know, in politics, no permanent friend, no permanent foe. What is permanent is interest. They went for their own interest. And it didn't work out. So they can also come back. And we will receive them if they show sufficient cause for us to receive them back to the party. Apuga is not my own, uh, it's not my property, it's not my personal property. We run Apuga as a collective enterprise. All of us are involved. You have the National Working Committee, you have the Board of Trustees of the party. If they come back, we table it before the National Working Committee and they, they take a decision. It's not my personal business. I'm not the one to take such a decision. But for me, as a person, I have an open mind, very, very open mind. And those who know me in the party know I have an open mind. I don't harm anybody. I don't work against anybody. I ensure there is smooth running of the party for our own good. There is internal democracy in Africa. You cannot get it better in Africa, better, better elsewhere than in Africa. We have run the party. We have opened our doors to people. People have trooped into the party. We have won elections across Nigeria, Bayesa, Taraba, Adamawa, Kaduna, Niger, Benue. We're everywhere. If we, didn't, if we had constricted the space, we wouldn't have won elections in those places. Even Munis, uh, uh, Abuja Municipal Council, Gwagwalada, we won elections there chairmanship position and eight councillorship seats. So that is, shows you that, that our system is flexible. We are not uh, fastidious about anything. So for me, this victory, I don't want anything to spoil this victory. Ask me questions that will give me joy, give Nigerians joy, because this is happy time. You don't ask me about the past. This, the make, you don't cry over speed to make. Let's forget the past and build the future. That's the way I walk. I am a very optimistic person. I believe that Professor Soludo will transform Anambra State. I am very confident about that because his emergence was divine, his victory and his success story as a human being has been divine and God will lead him successfully and enthrone a, 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 a leadership of probity, transparency, quick development in Anambra State. I'm very confident about that.
Well, amen to that. And thank you for indulging my question. But it wasn't actually about the past. It was about the future, consolidating your hard-won victory. Mm -hmm. Rufai. All right. So congratulations uh, to you and uh, Apuga, Abi, as, as it is called, you know, in in the, the, uh, the locality there in the Nambra State. And congratulations to APGA. I mean, but most importantly, I, I just want to know this. APGA has constantly led the way in the Nambra State. What message did APGA sell that was so loud and clear to the people that made a woman, as shown on television, reject 10,000 Naira voter inducement? What kind of message did Abka sell? Yeah, that tells you the Anambra spirit, Anambrian spirit. You know, there's something that is that happens in Anambra. They forget all the all the stories you read on the social media when they talk about insecurity and all that. So the election went smoothly, and no, 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 everything went well. First of all, we thank God for that. Then the there's what we call the uh, uh, the Anambra spirit. And that Anambra spirit is spirit of Onyaga and Wanne. That means be your brother and sister's keeper. That is our spirit. And uh, you cannot buy us with money. You cannot. An Anambra is, you know, a normal, a, a, an Anambra knows where, what he or she wants. That is the beauty of the Anambra person. He, he wants a solid, you know, solid foundation that will give his children a, 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 a sustainable future. You know, in Anambra here, the people are happy with each successive government. Since Abga came into office in 2006, Abga took over in 2006 with P2B. P2B came, transformed the state the much he could. Then Governor Biano came and has taken you know, development to another level. And what we expect from Toludo is what we call a Latin excellentissimum est. We expect the best from him, you know, what we call summa. He's going to score a summa at the end of his first four years. And the thing is this, go to Anambra State here, come to Anambra State here, workers are paid every 25th to 27th of the month. No government since P2B Tena has failed in that responsibility. Remember that P2B was in Apoga. When he was in Apoga, he performed superlatively. The moment he left Apoga, he, 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 the Apoga spirit left him. And he has never achieved anything ever since. If he wants to achieve anything politically, he should come back to Apoga. They will now reignite the Apoga spirit in him. That is how it is done. Let me tell you, let him continue moving from Jordan from Pillar to Pillar. He cannot achieve anything because Apoga gave him a platform. And he took a vow that he would never leave Apoga until death do them part. Now, he left Apga, and uh, what do you expect to do? When you take a vow, a, make a vow, a vow is a covenant, and you must keep it, keep to it. That is what is happening here. That is why in Anambra State, any politician that wants to win election, if you bring money, you will fail. We didn't have too much money to spend in this election, because all the money Obiano had was spent in building infrastructure for the people. So we went into this election just trusting God and trusting our people. And they didn't disappoint because they knew that APGA will continue to deliver the dividends of democracy to them. Governor William Obiano came, he has been paying salaries every 25th of the month, and Anambra State was, has been the only state that had never gone through a recession, even when Nigeria went through a recession. And according to the Bureau of Statistics, Anambra ranks among the first four Improve the management of fiscal resources. It's something to, 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 to applaud. And that is why our people are confident. Look at security. For seven years and seven months, Anambra State was stable security wise. But immediately, some people came into this, into this uh, foray, into this election. Everything ignited, they ignited the fire of hatred of uh, uh, political belligerence. You know, there was confusion everywhere because they wanted to create that fear in order to dissuade our people from coming out to vote. But you saw what happened on Saturday, 6th of November, 2021. Our people braved the odds. They trooped out in large numbers to the consternation 
of these people and voted for the right candidate. Let me tell you something. People talked about low turnout, low turnout. You don't need the one million people to elect a governor that the people will love. Okay? Professor Sorudo, if you repeat the election 20 times, you will win with wider and wider margin on each occasion. That is just the truth of the matter. And that is why I wish to advise his fellow contestants. Congratulate the man, back him up, to take Anambra State to the Eldorado of our dream. To make Anambra State a stellar state in terms of performance. That's what these people should do. Instead of going to court, I asked some of them say they will go to, go to court for what? The election was transparent. The BVAS was excellent. You know, security was top notch. So everything went fine. And the people are very, very happy. And that is why any day, any time, Africa will continue to win. Because our leadership is selfless focus. Okay, take for instance, as the national chairman of Apuga, we bought a national secretariat in a, a property of our own, 4,000 square meters of land. For our national secretariat, you know, that is what we call prudence. That's what we call vision. That's what we call pragmatic leadership. Well, we, our people <clears throat> feel the pulse of our performance, and that is why they are supporting us. Chairman, yeah, well, I, I need you to do two clarifications before I ask you the question. The first one has to do with uh, Mr. Peter Obi, yeah. former governor of Anambra State. You said he took a vow uh, with uh, mm. Abga that uh, he would not leave the party till death, uh, you know, separated him and the party. And that because he left the party, uh, you know, his politics has not been the way it has been. Well, are you by any chance suggesting that Abga has, a, a, you know, a, a cultic orientation? Because, you know, it's in this same Anambra State, in fact, in Iyala, local government, uh, that Nigerians had about uh, Okija, are you referring to an Okija vow? I need that clarification so that people will know exactly what transpired in that regard. The second thing, uh, you said that uh, the uh, persons who defected from the party, if they returned, uh, you know, they will be taken back and they will be uh, rehabilitated if they show sufficient remorse. What exactly do you mean when you say sufficient remorse? What will constitute sufficient remorse? As uh, Akachuku Nwankwo, for example, who moved from PDP to Abga, from Abga to the uh, African Democratic Congress, has he shown sufficient remorse by endorsing uh, Professor Charles Soludo on the uh, eve of the uh, supplementary poll in Iyala? Let me leave, with those, leave you with those clarifications. The other question I'll come back to. Okay, the first question, he talked about the cult, <laughs> cult orientation. It, it, that wasn't what I meant. Uh, I, I know you, Ruben, all the way from the Guardian newspapers. I'm a journalist by profession, too. And uh, what I said didn't have any ulterior motive repeated into it. It was a very an open thing. If you want, I can even send you the video. Um, for me, I believe in covenant. He made a covenant with God, not with Apoga. Oh, it's Apoga God. He said in the open that he will never leave Apoga until death do them part. That was what he said. It's open. I can send you the video. Uh, why, why I said this, he talked about why the people rejected the 5,000 Naira. That's what I, where I'm coming from. That the people believe in Apoga. It runs in their blood. It runs in my own blood, though. Even if you give me 100 billion naira, they even tried to induce me during the primary. I refused now, but I, I didn't want to make it public. I didn't accept it because I was focused. I told them I was going to deliver an untainted primary. And I delivered it. And you can see the emergence of Soludo. He went through due process. In spite of all the pitfalls, all the hula balu, he, he, he has emerged the governor as the God had destined it. I believe so much in what God can do. So there is no cult thing. I'm a born again, I'm a Christian, so I don't have any business with cults. What is cults? I don't believe in that, you know. I'm a Christian. My God is sufficient for me. What my God cannot do for me does not exist. Let, in fact, what God cannot do for me, let it be. I'm not, I don't give a damn to it. I, 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 I'm very proud of the God I serve. I begged God, I said, give us victory in this election, despite all the troubles. And God gave us victory. He's a God that answered by fire. And that's my God. So for cult sin and no cult, we don't do that in Apoga. We don't do that. 
You are talking about secret. I don't know what you mean by secret. Everything about our lives are in the, in the open. Like me, I'm in the open. Everything about me is in the open. It's not shrouded in any secrecy. Then coming to those that uh, left the party, when I said, talked about sufficient remorse, I knew what I was talking about. Even God, if you want God to forgive you, if you want God to forgive you your sins, he must show sufficient remorse. It's not enough to say, mea kupa, mea kupa, mea maxima kupa. It's not enough. He must follow it with action. Do you understand? He must show penitence. Penitence. People say, people say they are, they are, they are, they are, they have repented. Show me the sign now. You've repented by word of mouth. Show it in action. Okay? So that's what I mean. You talked about Akachukumwakpo. Akachukumwakpo, what he did, the last minute, uh, Everything he did was on his own. Nobody induced him. He didn't contact anybody. He just took that decision. That didn't mean he has come back to the party. Remember, he's still a member of ADC. But he said, for this election, I'll cast my vote for Soludo. That's all he told us. He never told us he would be coming back to Africa. He has never called me to tell me he would be coming back to Africa. So nobody, except those few persons I told you that uh, defected to other parties. They are, they are asking me to, what would they do to come back? And I told them, after this election, we'll discuss that. And remember, Abga is run democratically. Everything we do, we do within the system. We carry our people along. We have the National Working Committee. That is what you call hierarchy in the party. We have the Board of Trustees of the party. We have the National Executive Committee of the party. We have the National Convention of the party. That's how the party is run. So if, you, if they want to come back, I cannot sit here and say, you are welcome back to Apoga. I can't do that. We have to bring in other members of the party. The national leader is there. Governor Willow Biano is there. Now Professor Ludo has come in as governor-elect. Everybody will be carried along in taking that decision. That's why our party is run on a collegiate system. We come together, decide on something, and take the decision and move on. That's it. And uh, when I talked about Peter, I didn't mean any ill feeling, only any ill intention. No, 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 no. I only made that comment in person to drive home what I call the Anambra spirit that money cannot buy. So my next question is regarding the you know, you upcoming legislation going beyond this victory and looking to Nigeria's electoral process. While the APC is awaiting President Buhari's intervention, on their tripartite committee with regards to direct primary. I'd like the position of APCA on this issue of direct primaries being enshrined in law rather than leaving it up to the parties to decide how they want to conduct their primaries. Um, you see, for me, political parties have the capacity to choose which for format or which system will work for them. You know. Uh, the situations vary from one political party to another. What is good for the, what is good for APC may not be good for for APGA. So each party has its own ideological orientation. Okay. So for me, I believe in the rule of law, and also I believe in division of responsibility. You have the executive, you have the legislature. you have the judiciary. Those are the three arms of government. The political parties are not. <coughs> an arm of government, do you understand? And uh, when it comes to uh, uh, constitutions of political parties, constitutions of political parties are not superior to the act of the National Assembly or the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So whatever our representatives at the National Assembly deem necessary for all of us, what is wrong about that? Whichever system, because there's nothing new about the direct or indirect thing. Most political parties have it. We have it in Africa, in our constitution. Direct or indirect primary. In the last governorship election, we used indirect primary. And what is indirect primary? Indirect primary, you talked about delegates. Elect ward delegates. It depends on the way. But some political parties remember that during the primary, some of them introduced abracadabra, some things they would never witness before. And uh, I neck, uh, the court didn't even consider all that. That's why I'm telling you, this country is a very interesting place. 
For instance, one particular political party introduced what we call super delegates in the morning of the election. And that thing they did was against the constitution of Nigeria and even the constitution of their party because there was, there's no place in their constitution where you have super delegates. But when they went to Supreme Court and Court of Appeal, they overlooked it, they glossed over it. And uh, it's, their, it's their own, within their own confines to do that. But for me, whatever the National Assembly decides, because we have our own representatives there, if they decide that every political party should have direct primaries, remember, it's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to involve, you know, large workforce. For instance, INEC doesn't have the capacity. INEC doesn't have the capacity to conduct direct primary. And that was why, you remember, during the last uh, convention of PDP, they adopted what they call uh, a unanimous something. How did they, call, how did they put it? Consensus? Uh, uh, Consensus? They agreed that, he said what? Consensus? Yeah, hey, consensus. That's the word I'm, I've been looking for. So they settle for consensus. And consensus is not democratic. It can still be influenced, you understand, by money bags. So what we should do is, once anything is enshrined in the Constitution, enshrined in the Act of the National Assembly, it becomes law. And why political parties that abuse it is because it's not part of our statutes. Now that it's going to be part of our statutes, every political party will adopt that. If you fail to do that, then you, you, you go contrary to the law and you face the music. So what I think government should do, let them fine tune the direct primary stuff. Let them not allow you to go the whole country. You know, let's assume in the presidential election, if you did direct primary in the presidential election, it's going to be chaotic. It's going to take a lot of time. And most political parties don't have authenticated registers. And you know every political party is supposed to have a register with INEC. But to compile this register in 774 local government areas and thousands of wars in Nigeria, my brother, is, is something else, you know? So we need to do an introspection, do further discussions on this matter, bring in the political parties, you know? Let us agree on the modalities for implementing the direct primary mo uh, you know, model. There's nothing wrong about that. I like it as well, provided government can even come in and fund the political parties. Let me tell you something. We say in Latin, nemo dat non quod habet. You can't give what you don't have now. Now, they want political parties to perform miracles, magic, but nobody funds the political parties. And that is why the political parties are prone to influence from external influence. So government used to fund political parties, 10 million naira per party, but today it doesn't happen again. Nigeria has the capacity to fund political parties. They should be giving political parties subvention. Just the way they give, they, they give money to the National Assembly and the MDAs. They should give the same thing to political parties. How many political parties do we have? 18 of us. They can make a budget for, for political parties, oh. maybe two, 200 million naira every year. That will give us 3.6 billion to run the political parties. Because if a political party is not properly run, they'll be producing ill-prepared candidates for you in elections. And well, then they'll go there into the system and destroy the system. Well, Chairman Alga, well, we'd like Hello? to thank you very much. Uh, we seem to have run out of time. Although I would have loved to ask you, you know, what are the plans by your party to transform Abga from an Anambra one-state party into a national party in the true, true sense? But maybe when uh, Professor Charles Soludo... I can answer joined, that thing. Let well, me answer that in one minute. No, in less than a minute, a minute if possible. <laughs> Just, okay, 30 seconds, I can answer that. Abuja is not a, a regional party. Abuja is a national party. No party in Nigeria is registered as a regional party. It must, be, it must have national spread for you to be registered. And we met all the requirements to be registered as a political party. As we speak, we have representatives from Taraba, representatives from Benue, House of Reps. We have from uh, uh, Kaduna, from Niger. We have a House of Reps member from Ma Niger, Magama Rija, of federal constituency. Wow. Abuja is no longer a regional okay. party. But Point. let me tell you, every Point political you party must have a base. Okay. Yes. Because of politics. Every political party must have a base. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. It must start from somewhere. Yes. Thank you Thank very you. much. Victor Thank you. Oye, God bless you. Chairman of APCA. And congratulations.